Exam week getting you down? What you need is to put down that notebook and take in some of the beauties of nature. See what I mean? But wait a minute, young lady. How did you get into this picture? You see, we're trying to prove a point about nature and beauty, and you're not exactly helping, you know. Look at your hair. Look at that blouse. And the way that skirt hangs. And those socks. Sorry, there must have been a mistake. You don't seem to be exactly the type to make this guy behave like a human being. You know what? Beauty is one of those things that nobody agrees on. Within every cultural group, there's differentiations on what, quote, beauty is. Um, there's the external beauty and there's the internal beauty. Evolution says you're looking for an averageness. Not averageness as in you look like um, you're exactly the same as everybody else, but in that you don't have any outstanding features. So like a Jay Leno chin, having one feature that's very prominent makes you less attractive because it sort of pulls away from that general sense that everything is equal. What you consider to be beautiful um, may not be what someone else considers, which is where this old adage comes from, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, it's really true. Um, how many of us have friends who are like amazing, job dead gorgeous, whatever, but their attitude or their manners are horrible and repulsive and you don't want to hang out with them anymore? Um, meanwhile, someone who isn't physically very attractive or beautiful, but they have such a beautiful personality, everyone wants to hang out with them and befriend them. You're not born innately to believe you look at somebody's nose to figure out how they look. But in the culture, this is a value trait. That means you can associate with it, you desire to be like it, and so forth. I think nowadays it's this European, idolistic, Barbie doll, blonde hair, blue eyes, even if their hair isn't real, whatever, whatever, float your boat. But I think nowadays a lot of men are attracted to um, big breasts, big boobs. I don't know if it's necessarily a personality thing anymore. The fashion industry's definition of beauty is shallow. It's tall model perfect, size zero models, legs for days, mostly Caucasian, not necessarily black. And that's what it has been for decades and that's what it's gonna to continue to be. In lots of places we see um, cross-cultural similarities. So symmetry is one of those cross-cultural similarities. It's equal amongst a lot of different cultures and the majority of cultures worldwide. We see differences in things like body size, where certain areas of the world and about 44% of cultures, when you sort of break it down numerically, are interested and select mates that are heavier than what the West would consider to be thin. Only about 19% of cultures select for thinness, um, but that becomes a sign of beauty, and that's completely different than what we think here. Guys don't want to um, go out with women who are uh, taller than they are. Why not? It's a culturally learned thing. There's lots of different, like in subcultures, where you see like piercings and tattoos and things like that that we do here, um, where that becomes a symbol of um, either beauty or um, aggressiveness or something else that can also be sort of um, a source of pride um, and accomplishment, like you were able to stretch your earlobes, you know, to being enormous, and that becomes something that you you hold a lot of pride over and some people are very actively interested in and in finding a mate that has that. Standards of beauty are set by a society and they can vary according to um, who rules that society. And that can vary from community to community, it can vary from country to country, it can vary from family to family. I think it's important to uh, look at the at least from the Islamic perspective, when we talk about beauty, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the tests that we as human beings have. 
So whether I'm a woman or a man, I need to control my ego. I need to control, so just because I'm beautiful doesn't mean I get arrogant because of it, because this is only a privilege that God gave me, right? I didn't make myself beautiful. I didn't create myself in that sense. Television, just as a part of a massive mainstream media, has determined levels and standards of beauty for the purposes of selling products. It's not reality, and people need to realize that. I don't think it'll ever be reality. You can have as many plus size websites and clothing stores, but they're not the norm. The norm is the high fashion models. Well, now the actresses are taking over the magazines. And if you want to associate yourself with or be associated with this standard of beauty, in order to do that, you need to acquire this physical thing, this car, this, this jacket, these shoes, this, this apartment. You don't have to be what somebody else tells you to be unless you opt into it. And beauty isn't the only standard that's, in, that's important. It actually, in my opinion, is a standard of power, and beauty being one of the accoutrements of power. There are standards that evolution would suggest that are tendencies for us to want. So for women, it has to do with um, a hip-to-waist ratio. Having a smaller hip, I mean, I have smaller waist um, and larger hips shows that you're healthy, you're able to bear children, you're not currently pregnant. Um, your diet and nutrition are good. It signals those kinds of things which evolutionarily would be significant um, in our recent past. We also look for things in both sexes like symmetry. So there's something called the golden ratio where you can submit your picture online and there's companies that will calculate the ratio of symmetrical um, sort of bilateral symmetry down your face and then also tri symmetry through the three sections of your face, how symmetrical your face is um, on a scale of one to 10. And they've said that the highest rated person was a seven. So most people are in about the range of a four um, with symmetry. We're not very symmetrical. That isn't something that gets selected for very often, but when it does, that person is usually universally agreed upon to be attractive. One of the people that scores the highest is Brad Pitt. The standard is determined by the audience that the sponsors are trying to reach. So if I want to sell a car to a 35-year-old male, white, college-educated, living in an urban environment in America in 2011, then I'm going to come up with a standard of beauty that I believe, or that that person who I've just described has demonstrated that he is attracted to or she is attracted to. And I will put that person in my commercials. See the USA in your Chevrolet. America is asking you to call. Drive your Chevrolet through the USA. America's the greatest land of all. Beauty and inherently your sense of beauty and your own levels of beauty are tied to self-esteem and self-worth. And that's inherently a part of the combination of factors that come together. So that if you feel like you're worth something, that can make you feel attractive. I think that clothes do have a big uh, part of self-esteem. Some people put value into um, labels. They value themselves based on the labels, on what they can afford at the time. I think just looking at people in general, they see little girls wearing makeup, not even doing it for like artistic reasons or to express herself. They're just doing it to look older or to attract the opposite sex or to cover up something that they're hiding or just because they don't feel pretty. You know, I went to college with a girl. She's never matched. She didn't like matching at all. She wore plaids with stripes and Oh my goodness, she broke every quote unquote fashion rule, but she was so happy, like within her own skin. And you can't help but to respect anything like that. You're the only person that has to live in your body. There's no one else gonna live it for you. And if you're not happy doing what you're doing or being who you are, then makeup, no amount of um, 
silicone or hair weave is gonna make you feel pretty. So if you're not doing it for yourself, then there's no point in doing it at all. When I veil, it's pretty much I'm telling the world, judge me for my actions, judge me for what I do and what I say, and not for how good looking I am. 